Chihuahua officially became a province 17th of May 2012. It comprises three districts, Anglim South Wagi, North Wagi, and Jimmy District. Minge is a ghost town of what it used to be. The airstrip is no longer in use, and there are very few businesses still operating. The Road to Recovery gives us a closer look at the impacts of COVID-19 on business, education, policing, and health in Jiwaka. Like all local businesses, set in the serenity of bonds, Jiwaka Mission Resort is left with few options but to conduct its business as usual, despite the economic downturn everywhere. Okay, we have a promotion uh, coming up on the 31st uh, December to the New Year. It's called Chilling on the Mountains. Uh, basically, we sell tickets, uh, pre free sold tickets, uh, uh, would be about uh, uh, 250 bucks. And then from there, you, you throw your wallet, uh, money, everything at home, and you come to December 31st. Okay, what happens here is we, uh, in this environment, we don't allow unnecessary people. It's only by ticket or by ambience. And we said we will set three or four bars whereby people just with the ambience will have, uh, you know, quiet drinks, professionals mixing up. It will only happen once a year. It's called chilling on the mountain. So last year we brought a couple of people from Kensap, Mosby up, and Lay. Uh, just start up last year, so we would like to build on it every year. Okay, you'll have free drinks until daybreak. Rooms are there. Um, in the middle of the night when it's chill, we bring hot roast, roast box out. We cut those roast, roast box and people who have a bit of drinks, they can have, you know, uh, good food and uh, they chill on until 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, it's all free drinks, free food out of that one ticket. JMR is only one business affected, but by sharing a story of resilience, we can share hope and help other local businesses. What you do find is where formal business lacks, the informal economy steps in, and they are everyday people holding down full-time employment whose struggles for survival increased. When it came to our family budget, before the COVID-19 was okay, and now after the COVID-19, it was getting um, you know, expensive and uh, we had to spend more within a week. During COVID-19 it really affected us because we couldn't, he couldn't travel down to Medellin and he normally does uh, betel nut sales where we bring uh, betel nut bags and all this. So this really affected us up until now. One trip he goes down and when he comes back with, uh, let's say, seven to ten bags, mm -hmm. we get around 2,500 to 3,000 depending on the sales that yeah. we do, sometimes comes down, but not really down to 2,000, yeah. still up 2,500 to 3,000. But now it is really affected. I just sent someone down and not my husband, but sent someone mm -hmm. last weekend when he came back only with four bags and I ended up with 1,200 from the sales. Despite the odds and with a family to feed, her passion for teaching is evident. So adapting the students to the revised school year meant sacrifices for both teachers and students alike. And from the 11 different instructions, we were to implement one. Each school had its own, to select from those 11, had to select from those uh, to choose one on how to cater for the uh, lost five weeks. And that was one of the major impact that we had from COVID-19 in the school, um, increasing the number of periods in the days of the week. Normally we have uh, ten, uh, eight periods, sorry, eight periods, and then we had to increase by two. So we had from Monday to uh, Friday, we had uh, 10 periods. We had to, which had to cater for the uh, five lost weeks. A lot of teachers plus students were already, the energy and whatever went out, they were exhausted by the end of that term. And it affected the beginning of the next term. Because the one week holiday was not, they found that it wasn't enough. And they took the first week again. Teachers were reported for duty, but students never turned up the first week. And we had to wait and they turned up in the second week. Especially for our grade 10s and 12s, we saw that these were the examinable grades and time was catching up. So what we did was we had to uh, come up with uh, remedial activities in this term, which we did. The government imposed um, tuition free, a uh, fee free for the students and they asked parents to pay a certain portion. One of the impact that we saw on the parents, 
the way they tend up to pay the fees. When you look at the bulk of population here, they are from the rural kind of setting. Mm -hmm. So most of their lives depend entirely on the markets yes. where they get the income to pay the fees. And this really affected our, it's affecting our school currently now. We are running out of funds. Uh, TFF is not coming on time. Um, so far we had only three installments that was meant for the first part of the year. The second part and the third, which is for this term, not yet into the school account. And we are putting pressure on the parents to meet the 40%, which they can even meet it too when you look at the general picture of most parents depending on markets. Yeah. Just down the road, we stopped by the Minch Health Center that has faced financial constraints over the years. So when news broke of COVID-19, this was further burden for a facility that barely manages to provide basic health services as it is. As announcements were made through the National COVID-19 Control Center in Port Moresby early this year, this health center has never received any testing kits, PPEs or funding. Every community is within the districts, with these uh, three, four districts, they all are aware about COVID-19. We just only use what we have to minimize all these issues. We provide, uh, provide preventive measures and inform others and, uh, well, next relatives or whoever comes, guidance, that how they're going to manage with that one. Treat all minor cases, but more seriously, we refer them to Kojip. Well, they treat them, but I think uh, we don't have any facilities to confirm. The only thing is we send blood, but they... Well, it would be nice if uh, they provide any uh, test kits mm -hmm. or anything to confirm uh, COVID. Anglim South Wagi is the most populated district, with a recent provincial health review citing 192,000 inhabitants at the time of this story. One of the key result areas that is being prioritized is health response for violence against women. This is not uh, my own private uh, project, and it's a national project under KRA 7.1, points out clearly that uh, this health, uh, health response to violence against women and children, and they must create jobs and also fund this office. COVID-19 affected communities and services everywhere, including the country's prisons. Barawagi Correctional Service here in Simbul Province has been on lockdown since instructions from headquarters were issued in August. This means no visitors allowed and no new intakes will be accepted. And this has put a bigger strain on policing services in neighboring Jiwaka Province. After going through a quarantine, they left to go into the main prison company, mm -hmm. the majority of the prisoners are kept. Mm -hmm. So now we have a problem with uh, a separated detention area where the new intakes from police and courts are to be kept and quarantined for two weeks. So a month ago, I attended the Chimbu Provincial Government PMC meeting mm -hmm. and I, I told them we need a separate confinement area. And they verbally assured us that uh, they will build a separate confinement area. But for Chihuahua province, we have been uh, uh, put in our request through by the former commander, but nothing is coming forth. So currently, uh, we, uh, Paraguay CIS is closed. Uh, we can't uh, take any more prisoners from police or courts. So the courts are getting on us, the police are getting on us, but we can't do much. Barawagi Correctional Service has a total 285 remandis, 27 of them being female. Management and staff total 39. When COVID-19 entered PNG, news spread quickly, and the prisoners made a clear stand to authorities that there be no new intakes of prisoners, even threatening a breakout. The welfare and rehabilitation of prisoners is also important, 
And for those who have dedicated their lives to work with prisoners, they have patience and they have a heart to heal. When the accused persons are brought into the court, I was told to do not understand English, and, but are able to speak uh, the local language. I translate what they say to the court. I have been told by the CAS officers, because we work closely end in end mm -hmm. in the courthouse, they told me that they are now beginning to experience a food shortage at the CIS uh, jail in Barawaki in Simbu province, mm -hmm. and overcrowding, and they are afraid of the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It might affect the prisoners there. So they have been uh, getting the instructions from that court in Patmos be not to allow any more prisoners from Jiwaka. Mm -hmm. In Jiwaka province, we do not have a prison of our own. We rely on Baisu in Western Islands and Barawagi in Simbu. Ban's police station was condemned twice as unfit for human detainment by health authorities, and this compounds any efforts the police attempt to curb crime. The biggest issues police face here are alcohol and substance abuse among youth and it's a tough task for any officer to work within the limitations of resources. With this situation, the COVID-19 restrictions, coupled with the lockdown of Barawagi Correctional Service, this station deals it tough every day. And at the same time, the station that you're seeing right in front of me has been, has been condemned twice. One by the whistling judge, uh, way back some years ago, I cannot remember that. It was under the previous management and won by the national, uh, the health authorities from uh, Western Islands uh, health authorities. So the station that right now you're seeing, it has been condemned. We're waiting for the, uh, the national function, the police department from headquarters to come and rescue us from uh, this particular situation we are in. And uh, at the same time, it makes our job a bit awkward and hard because in that particular condom cell, we cannot detain suspects. Uh, the, the moment we keep on doing that, we, it's more like we are putting ourselves into that problem. And it can cost our job as well. News reports of tribal fighting and payback incidents in the highlands are frequent. What we don't often hear about are the feel-good stories. For the first time in Papua New Guinea history, there are women in the role of senior provincial magistrates at the district courthouses in Mount Hagen, Western Highlands, Wabag in Enga, Minj in Jiwaka, Kundiawa in Simbu, and Garoka for the Eastern Highlands. It's only excluding Hela and the Southern Highlands province. Minch District Courthouse is also the first in the country to become paperless. The Jiwaka Provincial COVID-19 response team assisted the Minch District Courthouse and the Minch and Barnes Police prosecutors to safely operate during the state of emergency and lockdown by providing multi-purpose printers, scanners and copiers, laptops, stationaries and flash drives to ensure minimal interaction between authorities and court users. Staff say this made their jobs extremely easy attending to criminal cases three days a week. The Minch District Courthouse gets between 10 to 15 fresh police cases a week and less amounts for civil cases. After the break, COVID-19 impacts were felt to various degrees, especially in the rural districts. More on scope after the break. Nabilia Range and the Tambul Nabilia district of the Western Highlands province boast some of the most fertile soil that supplies high-grade agricultural produce like sweet potatoes, English potatoes and broccoli. Sold not only in the main market in Hagen town but across the Highlands region and the rest of the country. <laughs> Like cooking oil or rice or tin fish or one em kakem plus a kakel on em, perfect nineteen em, a victim mebla. The mebla like run go long again em, mebla no nap go because long, it's less sick. You like a tubular market and up, plus mebla em serene all get a time. Now tubular market will land up em no get house, all mama also market, our side, the sample damn rain come em by swollen mold, kakeblo mebla. 
Suppose brought the killer and covered nothing. I'm not affecting people. I'm looking some color again. I'm looking some good money, but suppose covered nothing. I'm affecting people. I'm all petty, but still nothing. Lawyer, I'm looking some go. They are transporting the 68 bags of potatoes to the allocated market space in town, and if they are lucky, they'll all sell out at 200 kina per bag. That's much needed income for struggling rural families. But since COVID-19, price drops bring in 150 per bag or less if they're lucky. I mean, especially local producers, we play some time legally because of COVID-19 is affecting me. Play side long go buy more like. A factory man was like pet lasher, and she let me affect him. Him no come to true law. Maggots me black some time. Some play me black put him shit now put him back up, but still me play him make him. But then go go out na salem to him me affect me blood lo salem because me blood lo me play him especially lo again so again maggots me shut down. Now me play out lo salem me blood put him lo roadside, but some play time also come him. Plenty time also come him. Him just stop back up steam. Him me was me flesh and lost him plenty something, but. Because I'm daily life, I'm so I'm not lose him all get us. Still, I'm struggle to plan him. Lose loan him, I'm not lost, but I'm not struggle to plan him that stuff. The community in Tomba Council numbers 3,000, the majority of whom are farmers. Their livelihoods were affected when many could not take produce to the main market in Hagen due to its closure. The biggest expense for the people are the transport costs, simply getting the goods to market. I teach a lot of at uh, Tomba Elementary. I teach a lot. I market law. I'm uh, not supporting family because I'm sick. I'm come lockdown. I'm pay blow me blow. Public servant work lock cut down. I'm not supporting the market. I'm supporting the family. I'm not supporting the family. I'm not supporting the family. I'm not supporting the community. I'm not supporting the community. Then surplus product, lo mi plan, mi plan se karim go out lo agen market na salim. But COVID-19 ni bin abikti mi plan ka mosem na wem. Agen market em stop tu na. Mi plan out long ol salim ol kai ke plan mi plan go out long ol nat lab so mi plan ol salim lau sto go na. Kai ke mo ol stop go na bagarap. So COVID-19 abikti mi au money plan mi plan tu em saran go ay long em money tu em go low na. Economic plan mi plan tu bagarap na. Nakia checkpoints like this along the Tumble Wabag Road operate 24 hours and allows the agency to monitor the movement of pigs and pig products between provinces here in the highlands. According to the National Agriculture and Quarantine Inspection Authority, the first outbreak of African swine fever in Papua New Guinea occurred in the southern highlands in Hela, with the death of 396 free-ranging pigs reported on March 5th of this year. Nakia continues awareness and the roadblocks to prevent pig movement. ASF affects the greatest commodity for the Highlands region. Pigs are a sign of value, wealth and respect, a food and cash source for families and community obligations. COVID-19 meant managing two separate pandemics simultaneously. This is a big thing that has been a big thing. It's a big thing that has been a big thing that has been a big thing that has been a big competition. I will buy Mary, and I will make a plan to something along this way. I will give them a lot of money, and I will pay them school fees online. I will make them good, but I will come and come also, and I will not kill them, but I will come and finish the work. But the government will make them one along this way. I will make them one along the side of my plan, and I will make them free. Free, so I am strong and stubborn to the government. And as adjustments are made to the new normals, provincial COVID-19 response teams have the bigger task of addressing the new threat, but still managing the existing health priorities. We haven't tested as many people as we would have liked, and that is just simply because we can't get the supplies. But we've screened a significant number of people, probably well over 30,000, uh, we have screening teams at the airport, so everyone that comes in by air gets screened and everyone that comes into the gate at the hospital gets screened. We haven't had any positive cases yet that we know of. Why I say that we know of? Because the lead time for getting results has been quite long. We've trained all our staff, so it doesn't matter what you do in, in, in my PHA, you will have 
had COVID training. So we we believe we're well prepared. COVID has done is it's taken the focus away from a lot of other things. We're making sure that our immunisation rates, for example, stay up. We're not prepared to have people in the rural facilities say, oh, well, we're working on COVID, therefore we can't do the routine things. And, and clearly immunisation is one of, the, you know, one of the great things because um, you're preventing disease. In our own COVID meeting, we meet three times a week. In our own COVID meeting, um, we talked this morning about we're approaching a million deaths worldwide from COVID. But we lose more people than that through TB. We wrap up this episode of The Road to Recovery looking at Papua New Guinea's response to COVID-19 here in the Highlands region. Next week, with restrictions still on international travel, Milan Bay tour operators must now target domestic tourism. I'm Hannah Joku. Join me then.